So um, as chair of the Rochester Select Board, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by Governor Scott as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and pursuant to addendum six to executive order 01-20 and act 92, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. Let me admit somebody else here. There we go. Um, in accordance with Act 92, there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting. However, in accordance with the temporary amendments to the open meeting law, I confirm that we are providing access, public access to the meeting by the Zoom platform and all members of the board have the ability to communicate contemporaneously during this meeting through this platform and the public has access to contemporaneously listen and if desired participate in this meeting and you can log on to the meeting by looking on the town website or looking at the publicly posted warnings for the meeting or contacting the town clerk to um, get emailed an invitation so um there you have it and here we are and does anybody have any additions to the agenda at this time that's fine going once going twice all right we have enough on there to go um we'll start with the meetings from the um the minutes from the prior meeting of november 9th and uh i saw they seemed like they looked um look pretty tight to me I, I move to approve okay. them i second that yep all in favor all right all right all right so i have um we have um okay orca media is on recording this and it was i think that in the interest of making sure that everything is open we need to know everyone who is in attendance at the meeting so i can see we can see pretty much everyone there except for one phone number at um 746-8638 would you like to identify yeah. hey i like your face Thanks. all right hello hello who's um calling like from and i like your beats and your hair uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, they're um they've got Lucky. a kid in the room. We know that much. Um who's um who's called in from 802-746-8638? Keith Polecki. Okay, cool. Thank you, Keith. We just need to um that way um we have a record of everyone that's in attendance at the meeting because everyone else their um names are pretty much assigned with their pictures. So um I guess we'll um, start right in with um, Jones updates. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Um, it'll be quick. Uh, I filed for the uh, NRCS emergency watershed project reimbursement um, just today. Frank came in and signed the uh, reimbursement form. So that's been sent in. Um, Next, uh, I think several of you got this email, but you may have not had a chance to, to read it yet. Uh, this came from Two Rivers, and uh, they're offering some information, which I think might, might be useful to the right for, um, I think somebody needs to mute themselves. Um, anyway, um, in the event of uh, COVID affecting the ability of uh, any members of the road crew to work um, during the busy season this winter, either due to needing to quarantine for two weeks or themselves getting sick. I hope none of that happens. But the event it does, um, one of the things that towns are starting to talk about is uh, signing mutual aid agreements with other towns. So if they're short manpower during a, a busy time snowstorm or something that they're able to call on um, whoever they have a mutual aid agreement with. And of course it goes, you know, both ways. Um, so that might be something to consider. Um, and there were a couple other things. So that seemed to be the most useful one uh, to think about. 
So uh, if you'd like, um, I'd be glad to read through the material that uh, Turks sent and summarize it for you. And, uh, see if there's anything you want me to follow through on uh, working with Twitter or with Frank or whatever uh, you would like me to do uh, to put that together. Yeah, that's um, that um, proposal, you know, to uh, have communities um, integrate with their neighbors to, I mean, I think that's definitely aimed at some bigger communities. Um, around here, I think they have what a two person road crew in Stockbridge. We have a three person road crew here. Is it in uh, Granville and Hancock? They, um, they, they contracted out. They contracted yeah. out. So it's, um, I think that our um, more than interacting with neighboring communities would be more likely to, um, you know, make initial contact with um, some of the larger companies that deal with um, the winter maintenance, just, um, you know, cover our, ourselves in the case of a, of a real breakdown in our, in our road crew. Uh, <coughs> yeah, I, I think we'd have better luck coordinating with um, some of the local residents than, than the neighboring mm -hmm. towns. This is mm -hmm. my thought. Okay. I know, Pat, you're involved in the that kind of activity. What, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I think that uh, we have lots of infrastructure independence in this valley. Um, you know, Harvey's is always ready to lend a hand and, and we are too, and like we did with the sidewalks. Um, yeah, yeah I, would, I would not want to impose on, on Stockbridge. They probably would think we asked too much. They got yeah. quite a few roads anyway. <laughs> yeah, it might not be another town that's that's as you know small as ours or small. Yeah. But, that, that, but that, anyway, that, if you feel you've got other you know uh, uh, ways to do it, that's that's fine. I mean, well, we it, just the, the same the, the same purpose applies though to to have that conversation now and not in the middle of a of a snowstorm, just to um, put people's. I did actually have a, a short conversation with Ray Harvey about this this um, this morning when I saw him. Um, down by his garage there just to you know um, throw that out there so 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 yeah at least if, if you have a plan in place so that if something does happen like yeah. a member has to go yeah yeah uh, in well, quarantine that you're not scrambling to you've got something you definitely know, worth having a conversation with cooter about that but. okay okay but no that was good that they brought that point up yeah it was a good you know, point so yeah. excuse me, that was two rivers out of Cleachy that, that um, brought that up, suggested that you contact other towns for mutual aid, but you're, yeah. uh, you're feeling it's better to contact local contractors, right? Um, that's kind of, this seems to be the sense. Yeah, of, okay. Yeah, there's, um, I, I wanted to make sure I yeah. got that correct. Thank you. In the past, we've always had lots of wonderful mutual aid with the local contractors uh, when we've had uh, storms and floods and uh, everything else is thrown at us. So I'm sure if it was just a simple, simple snowstorm, yeah, we, they'd be there for us still. Okay, All right. that was it. What else have you got, Joan, is that it? Yeah, that's it. All right, All right, well, thank you. Sure. Thank um, I guess that kind of um, touches on the highway line. We don't have anything specific other than all the sand and salt is in and plows are on the trucks and we're ready, um, ready to go. I guess we should make sure there's masks in the truck too. I think there are. Um, we have a bunch of stuff in the, um, in the new business section, um, starting off with the uh, approval of a class four highway winter maintenance application or agreement. This is uh, would be the second time around for the um, Kenny Beatty up on, on Oak Lodge Road where it heads into Granville and his property there. And uh, we approved this um, last time and I, I have not been aware of any issues or problems with that. So I, do you guys have any input on that or? No, I've actually had the chance to drive the road uh, a couple times this fall, and um, it's it's in it's in relatively good shape. It is being maintained. 
Um, and so, yeah, I think that we can uh, stay the course. Yeah, yeah, so I'd move to approve that. All, right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And, and uh, uh, vacancy on the cemetery commission. Um, Nancy, can you speak to that or who's? Um... I can. Um, since I get back to it, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Um, Java Hubbard, after I don't know how many years, I'll bet she's been on there for 35 years, um, has decided it's time to do other things with her time. And so she resigned as of the 30th of October. Her term uh, extends to 2022. Um, so we're looking for an appointment to fill her spot um, until the next town meeting. And at that point, which is March 1, um, and at that point, um, we would vote to fill her term until 2022 when we would be looking to have an appointment for a five-year term. Do you have any suggestions? We're looking. We don't have any that we're going to uh, discuss right now, but we are talking and we are looking. Um, it's a little quiet down there right now, so we're okay. All right, so that'll be um, pushed on to old business for our next meeting. Huh? Right, it, it, it will be on to be appointed. Be continued, okay, cool. We'll be coming to you for an appointment. Yep. Yep. Once we find someone. So, um, so I just really want to thank Java for, yeah, for at least 35 years of. Oh, Nancy, at least 35, you think? So I, I don't better. know. I don't know for sure. I didn't. How about if I just said for many years? She, decades. Many decades. <laughs> I'm sure she's been on for decades. many more than 35 years, too. And Over 30 knows, years, should I say? You can say that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, sure. We'll probably come back at you and say it was X number of years. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> but she has actually, I mean, she's been a valuable part of it. She took minutes for all those years. Um, and but I think she feels that it's just time to make a change. So we're grateful for her service. All right. Um, so um, town meeting coming up and um, with the um, our, our life of Zoom meetings, it looks like we're going to need to adopt an Australian ballot for the town meeting. And, and Frank, you've been doing a bunch of work with Nancy on, on the, the rules about what's allowed and what's not and what, what can you tell us about? Well, for, for opening and doing, I'll just, we're, I put together a little thing and I'll just read it. Uh, in response to COVID-19, the Vermont legislator uh, passed Act 162, allowing towns by a vote of its legislative body the right to adopt the use of Australian ballot for any town meeting annual or special for the year 2021. The general subjects the law enables towns to adopt are election of officials, all budget articles, appropriations, and petitions. So that's basically the gist of what they've done so far. So we as a town have to adopt, uh, if we wanna vote by Australian ballot, which I think it's the only way we're gonna be able to handle it down the road uh, for town meeting. So I framed it in the form of a question if you don't have any discussion on it or if anybody wants to ask anything about it, um, they can right now. Fire away. <laughs> we basically are just taking the first step because there, there's it's ever changing and they're really swamped at the Vermont League of Cities and towns right now because every town is in the same position as we are. Basically. So Frank, I have a question. Um, if we voted by Australian ballot, uh, would we not have any meeting at all or would we have attempt to have some sort of a, a meeting via Zoom? We, we still have to have a pre-town and we still have to have a town meeting. Virtually. 
but we don't know how that's going to work yet and we don't want to put too much out there so we're just going to take it one step of a time at a time and i think in december we'll have some better answers so our, what we need to do tonight is just adopt the uh, the idea of the Australian ballot for all our election of officials and that. And I framed it in the form of a question. If you guys want to vote on that right now, we can do that. I, I second that motion. Okay. Yeah. Um, you all set with it, Pat? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Shall the town of Rochester, by vote of its legislative body, elect its town officials, adopt all budget articles, all appropriations, and petitions signed by 5% of the registered voters by Australian ballot for 2021? And that's basically what it is. I would um, move we adopt that. I can second that. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, um, so we will we'll have definitely more information to share um, as this unfolds because there will be where you, we won't have the option to just stand up on the floor and say, I, you know, I nominate so and so for this or that. We're going to have to make it clear to people that if they want to nominate someone, there's got to be a, they've got to do that ahead of time and get them, get them on that ballot, right? Well, the, Go can ahead, Nancy. Take it, Frank, or do you want me to? I, I don't care. You can or I can. Doesn't matter. Any, any individual seeking office is going to have to complete a consent form um, and have it into the town office to the town clerk uh, no later than the, believe it or not, the sixth Monday before town meeting, which is somewhere around the 18th. Of yeah, Monday. I think that's, that's what it okay. is. So it applies to anyone seeking any office. Um, so no. You everybody. don't have to have any signatures. You just have no. to sign the consent form. Yeah. So anybody that wants to run for an office will have their names printed on a ballot. And that's about as much as we know. Um, so my question is, I also have a question. Um, if we're voting by Australian ballot, am I right in assuming that we're going, you're going to on, on that day uh, go to- I thought we do not have any of those facts yet. Okay, yeah. so you don't know like where you'd be going to vote and all that kind of stuff. We do not know right. that. Okay. You don't have that down yet. All right, so I think- There's still I'll just a lot of questions that, that we have. Yeah. So. This is just the first step of laying right. this, this um, right. procedure out. Every day more information comes in and the governor and the legislature are still making changes. So if I said that uh, you voted to conduct town meeting by Australian ballot and we'll be spending the next couple of months um, working out all the details as how to do that, would that be- About correct? one month. Okay, yeah, we'll have it done in December. It'll have to be finalized by then. We have deadlines. Yeah. Um, so that basically covers this next item on the agenda, the social service agency requirements for appropriations for town meetings. Now that's, um, mm -hmm. we need to get that information out to them. I think the majority of what we have voted in the past are already in. Yep. Um, and the one key here is our policy says if you're not looking for any more money or any less money, you don't have to have a petition. But if you are going to petition the town, if you're going to look for some more money or it's a new petition, then we're going to require, um, we're not going to waive the requirement um, for a petition. Okay. And you say most of the um, agencies that usually are supported have already- We've um, already received them. Already I received think them. they're all in except, except maybe one, right, Nancy? I think there's only one still to come. Yeah, Can I it, think there's only one left. Right. Okay. It should be um interesting meeting. 
How many people can you fit on a Zoom screen? Oops, I said how much you pay for Zoom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not sure how we're going to deal with that yet. <laughs> how much do you pay for Zoom? They'll get you as large as you want, but you might have to come up with more money for it. I lost my screen all of a sudden. That's weird. Oh, we see you. We see you. I know. I, I, I can hear everybody, but I don't know where the picture went. Go down to the bottom. That's weird. Go down to the bottom and what do we do? Where it says stop video. Um, I don't see anything that says stop video. On the very bottom. Pull all the way uh, down. Near the mute button. Uh, on the right hand side. Open support chat. I don't know. No. Well, you can you can hear us though, right? I can hear everybody. I don't know what happened to the picture. I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> That's it's weird. Up. You Where know you what all? we look like, Dolphy. That's so, um, the next item on the agenda is um, we've got the mowing contracts for fiscal year 22. I'm curious, is this just a reminder to us that we've got something in place for that next year or, or what's up with this being on the agenda? Uh, yeah, that uh, the, the mowing contract expires next year. So we were thinking with the budget and finance, we might want to keep that in mind. Okay. Um, let me think. But we have, he is contracted through through uh, next summer though, I believe. Yep, so through November 15th of 2021. So it's just a reminder. Okay, yep. I am Hey, one more to, thing, Doon. Wait a second. Uh, um, Frank, um, Jeffrey was saying something there. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. I didn't realize. Uh, I'm intending to take a look at uh, the uh, potential of uh, mowing electrically. Um, I'm seeing some products on the market, uh, some of those zero radius uh, turn, uh, the skid steer loader or type turning mowers. Mm -hmm. I see that there are a couple of those out now from Ryobi and there's actually bigger equipment uh, for ag use. Um, how I, I would be interested uh, in assessing this to know how many acres the town mows so we can determine whether the batteries in these pieces of equipment will actually function for what our needs are. Um, and uh, how long, it sounds like you do multi-year contracts. Um, yeah, we have been like doing two or, I think this was a two year contract for the mowing and I think we have a um, three year contract for the sidewalk plowing. Mm -hmm. So in well, terms of you know, something to think about in terms of putting this out to bid is, is and again, we need more information and I'll, I'm going to do more research on this, but uh, thinking about putting it out with a specification as to the type of equipment to be used or if Rochester put it out with its own equipment rather than, you know, having the equipment provided by a sub or a contractor, I should say. Hmm. Uh, it's great to know that this happened until 22 because then it'll be easier to, to work out the analysis and figure out whether it works for the town. I think that's a great idea. Uh, if you remember, was it last year at town meeting, we voted uh, to um, what was the thing about climate change and that we were going to place uh, all the decisions to be made with climate change in mind. So this definitely falls under under that category would satisfy what the voters voted for then. Mm -hmm. And again, it, it's a consideration. If I can find out how many acres uh, the town mows, then I can start looking on uh, the equipment is well married to that job. And then we can start looking at dollars and, and structures. Right. I uh, think by going into the office and looking at the tax map, you can get a pretty good idea of mm -hmm. the acreage. Okay, so that's not spelled out in the uh, contract with the. Uh, not by acre, I don't think. It just specifies which um, graveyards or which uh, septic field or what have you, and you know, ball field. It doesn't, it's not split out by acreage, I don't think so. Okay, well, maybe I take a little bit of research. Get a measurement going out there to see, you know, what that is, because I'm sure that that's how they're going to, that is how they equate battery capability to the job. I'm sure it's all on, all listed in the tax map and probably the listers. Mm -hmm. Just to Great. give you an idea, Jeff, the 
the park is just over two acres. Mm -hmm. Four acres. Well, the, the original, the big part is two acres. It's got to be more. According to the Google map. Well, I think it's, it's supposed to be four acres. Well, probably used to be. <laughs> <laughs> it's, we'll get a tax refund. Right? It is actually surveyed. Yeah. We have a survey. Well, that's what we, uh, the guy at the at laws told me because he had it gauged for how much we were going to put on the park. Huh. Well, I know driving an electric car, it's awful quiet. And it'd be uh, <laughs> neat uh, on the green when, uh, on the park when uh, mowing's going by and all you do is hear the grass blowing. Well, speaking of the park, I, I just want to um, mention that since I've been the only person on the park committee for the last several years, and the park committee was, has always been in charge of putting the Christmas tree up on the bandstand, and I physically can't do that anymore because of my medical problems. So I, have, I hope it's okay with you guys, but I talked to Norm Christensen, who's head of the rec committee that I'm on, and, and they've agreed to take it over and, and put and do uh, as long as I would like just organize it for them. They will, they will put, put up the Christmas tree it's on the and it's all been organized and it's yeah been nancy it has been talking to norm about it but i didn't know if i was supposed to run it by the select board or not i'm sorry i forgot no it sounds like um you good job of taking your um your responsibility seriously and, and making it happen well know. i've been doing it for so many years yeah. and now i can't and i i want to make sure it still happens because i think people <laughs> are being... good delegating martha <laughs> yeah well norm was willing to do it so that was great and Nancy, Nancy's going to just, help. Just one more note, Doon. Yep. Um, I did talk with Magic Brush today about the painting. And he's going to get in touch with me in, in around 10 days. And, and we're going to meet and look over the buildings. OK, great. So we'll get some kind of idea of what we're looking at for money doing that. Yeah. And he also has a couple of lifts. Um, that he will be over. He said he had another job in somewhere in the valley here that he will have one of those lifts here. So he will uh, deal with the flagpole at that time. Yeah. What do you deal with? Maybe painting some tar on the library roof where it leaks? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, was, I was up there looking at that today. I actually took some pictures of the windows just to see what what was up there and I, I got to find out which ones they got problems with. I know there's one is pretty that I looked at is pretty bad, but the others look like they could probably go for a while. Um, and I, I was wondering why they couldn't go up on a ladder on the side towards the pumpkin patch there. And if the leaks on the back side, you know, it's on the south side, I guess. So I don't know where it is or anything, but, um, and that is a metal roof on that too. So I don't know what the leak is doing, but where it's coming from. So might be around the chimney, who yeah, knows? I, I don't really know. The chimney, yeah. I, I don't, so we'll, okay. I'll dig into that more later. I don't know. Can you get into the attic to see from below where there's the water damage? That be a might it be an easy way to start look, looking for that leak. I, I think somebody already has a. I think. Yeah. And I, I was going to talk to Larry Strauss about it to see. Yeah. And I'll, I'll go from there. All right. Thank you. Um, so the sidewalk plowing that was also on here, just as a reminder. Um, that, that we've actually got another um, uh, two years on that contract, I believe. Right. Yeah. So, am I correct? That the both the mowing and the sidewalk plowing contracts that are current are in existence through 2022. Um, the sidewalk is through 22. I think the mowing is just through 21. 21. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Wow, um, made quick work of that. Um, 
Is there anything that anyone else would like to speak about tonight? Um, i just going to mention, I heard from uh, Two Rivers Latiquichi Regional Commission. They have scheduled the first of the uh, Tri-Town, Hancock, Rochester, and Pittsfield uh, Municipal Energy Committee meeting. So I will attend that. Uh, that's like a 4.30, uh, 4.30, 4.30 to 6.30, I, I forget what it is. What, what um, uh, I'll attend that and uh, thanks to uh, Joan for getting me the information about the uh, EV chargers. Uh, and um, Jeff, um, if there is any news from that meeting, if you wouldn't mind emailing it to me, I could put something in the Herald to keep people informed um, about the committee meeting. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, uh, news at our herald.com is the email. I think it's in the Herald already. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for taking that on. And I saw that your um the meeting you were gonna have with the walkthrough and buildings, you guys put that off. Yeah, um that uh, was scheduled for after the recent COVID uh, amendment. Yep. Um, okay. So and that it really bars efficiency Vermont from making those uh, site calls. Doesn't keep their contractors from doing it, but it require it uh, doesn't allow them to do it. So so I'll just monitor the situation and make open that back up. Uh, great. In the meantime, I'm asking them to uh, find if they have any uh, expertise in pumping because that's where a lot of our electric energy use is, sewer and, and water pumping. Mm -hmm. Some mm -hmm. of the biggest ticket items. I've also started, but I'm going to redo the CV oil um, tracking that I set up to be on your fiscal year. That was a real dumb move to set it up in the calendar year from my end. But I'm going to set that up and try to address um, your request for some forecasting to end of year um, mm -hmm. for what good any algorithms I might come up with might be. But to give you a tool for forecasting and hopefully get this thing set up as a system that others that you can use uh, for management. That'd be great. And budgeting. Yeah. Yeah. And budgeting. And and also, um, you know, there was a time a few years ago, and it's it's kind of fallen by the wayside that um, we used to lock in rates for fuel um, with like CV oil. Um, and then it fluctuated so much. You, some years you were happy and others you weren't. So um, perhaps if we if we have this 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 record to look back on, maybe we could do some tracking and, and get down to doing a little bit of shopping and negotiation for some big ticket items. Yep. Yeah, for that tracking to be really good, what we need to do is normalize it for heating degree days. Um, across the year uh, so that we can, you know, we, we don't want to be looking at, uh, although we're looking at the hottest years pretty much on record. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess it's not likely to go down heating degree days too much at this point. Mm -hmm. No. Uh, Jeff, are the, the three towns that you mentioned that are in this tray town, it's Rochester and Hancock. Did you say Pittsfield or Stockbridge? Pittsfield and Hancock. Okay. That's what I thought. I'm sorry. I wanted to make sure. Thank you. It was offered to Granville and, and Stockbridge as well, but uh, for whatever reasons, those towns don't have them, are not participating. Okay, so Rochester, Hancock, and Pittsfield, and you're going to attend the meeting. Thank you. All right. And if I'm stuck quarantined, then I'm going to look to Frank because he's our alternate. <laughs> <laughs> don't get quarantined. <laughs> Trying not to. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm about as socially isolated as they get. You know? <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, <clears throat> well, I guess um, the next uh, item on the agenda is to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving everyone. Happy and safe and um, yeah. not crowded, I guess. You know? Going to camp. Going to camp. I hear it's hard to find small turkeys. Everybody's went for small turkeys because they're not having a big crowd. No. I, I solved the whole problem of getting a turkey TV dinner to eat by myself since I'll be by myself. <laughs> Very exciting. 
<laughs> Turkey's over 10 pounds are now 39 cents a pound over at Shaw's. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, the turkey farmers are getting hit big time. They're getting yeah. cranberries, probably sweet potatoes, everybody. <laughs> Reminded me of when I used to have as many as 25 people for Thanksgiving years ago and my sister and her family and all the and a bunch of people used to come probably 10, 15 years in a row I used to do that. But wow, I couldn't do it now. <laughs> do we have any uh, em employee issues we need to discuss? Um, I have a little bit of a conversation we could, um, we could um, yeah, we could move into executive session and talk about that a little bit. If you want a little update. Yeah, I think we should. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I guess we're going to um, say goodbye and we'll um, enter into executive session to discuss the employee issues. And thank you all for coming. Okay, thanks. Happy, Happy Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving.